That was that was great. Um, yeah, that was that was a really good role. That one. Uh, that was great for a project by John Howe, um, who is the creative director on Peter Jackson's Lord of the Rings and uh, and the Hobbit films. And uh, yes, John Howe put together this this series that uh, it was the idea. It was an interesting one. The idea was to to explore Tolkien's inspiration for his characters and um, and locations uh, for the Lord of the Rings um, and and he did this by by exploring you know all, all the myths and legends and, and folklore from around the world that, that Tolkien drew upon yeah it was, a, it was a great one to be involved with I was, I was very lucky to get that um, and, and to wear fabulous costumes the, the costumes are incredible um, they were, the suits of armour were um, Terry English creation. You know, the, Terry English, the uh, Hollywood master armourer. You know, he was he was making all the armour for things like Excalibur, um, Sword of the Valiant with Sean Connery, and um, and yeah, we had him on set for this, and, and um, yeah, he was he was dressing me in that fantastic suit of armour. Yeah, it, it was great. It came with its challenges as well, wearing that suit of armour. <laughs> I mean, there's, there's, uh, I mean, just getting out of a chair, for example, you know, just trying to stand up and still look like a king. You know, um, it, it, that, that was that was that was hard at times. There's, there's a scene where I have to, um, I have to join the knights at the round table, and, and, and that involves me getting up from my throne to do so. Um, but because of the weight of the armour and, 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 and it's so restricted, and you have this tendency, you, you obviously you, you need to put your arms down and, and press down on the armrest to just hoik yourself up. You know. But obviously that doesn't look good, you know, you're supposed to be King Arthur, you're this mythical, strong king, and uh, so you're expected to just rise effortlessly from, from, the, from your throne. And that really takes all your core strength. <laughs> Your core muscles are screaming at you as you're just trying to rise and look just effortless in doing so. So that, uh, <laughs> yeah, that, that was interesting. That was fun. <laughs> but uh, but uh, the, oh, the locations, they, they were stunning. Yeah, they, they filmed all over the world. I mean, it's, uh, there were locations, you know, it's in New Zealand it started, obviously. Um, they, they filmed in Iceland, Germany, and uh, in the Black Forest there, and then France and Brittany. And they, uh, yeah. and it was a French uh, crew that came over and uh, filmed in Tintagel in Cornwall, and um, yeah, cast me as King Arthur, and it was uh, yeah, it was a good one. I enjoyed it. Yeah, yeah brilliant. Oh, I love doing these. You've, you've got an amazing team together. Mm -hmm. and it's, um, yeah. Yeah, I think I must have interviewed 30, 30 people. Oh. Sure, That's about 5%. 25, <laughs> 25 people that come to do, so, yeah. So, the reason why we're doing these is to celebrate your film that you're doing, it, which is one of the biggest films in the South West at the moment, independent film, but also to celebrate South West film. You know, you're a place in the South West and you're, you, you're doing amazing stuff. So welcome to another episode of the English Riviera, I suppose Banners of Lee Sands show really, because there's just so much, <laughs> so much um, amazing talent in the, in the film. So we're going to start with... And Stuart, who are you and who do you play? Well, uh, hi John, and uh, hello English Riviera Film Festival. Um, well, I'm Stuart Davidson and um, I... I play Dr. Alexander Hogg, um, and uh, he's uh, he's he's the medical doctor in in this uh, in this film, and he's 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 got a few issues, but he's uh, he's ultimately a nice guy. Um, so unlike Alex, he he is a good guy, and um, you know I've I've grown to quite like him. So hopefully the audience will too. But we'll have to see. And what's been your most inspirational moment on set um, so far in the scenes you've been in? Um, 
<clears throat> I would say that the most inspirational moment was um, the court scenes, actually. Um, these, were, these were really big scenes, and um, there, was a, there was hundreds of, of extras uh, and essays involved in this, and they really, you know, filled up. And it was in, in, in the actual court scene that happened. It, the whole community came out of Workington, and they did come and barricade at the doors of the courthouse to try and get in. And um, and the court was full of people, and uh, and Steve, all credit to him, replicated that, you know. And he's he's got a huge number of, of essays, and they filled up the courthouse, and they were so uh, so involved, you know. It, it, it's great when that happens, and you know they were all he he, he needed. It was a very emotional um, some court scenes going on there, and, and he really needed them to um, to be involved to to give that energy and. And they were they were all were giving a hundred percent. It was fantastic, and um, and that sort of you know you, you ride along as an actor, you ride along on that sort of wave when the whole set has got that energy going. So that really inspired me to, to sort of up my game, if you like, and 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 really hopefully deliver um, the scenes that I did in in that court. Thank you. And um, still people, John. Um, yeah, I'll just add to this. Stuart actually got a standing ovation for his performance. It was that oh, wow. good. It was amazing. It did two takes and that was it. It was over. And oh, well done. Yeah. That's what you want from an actor. You move on to the next thing. <laughs> <laughs> no, who's who's behind me that does it? It's, uh, it's, the, it's you guys who are amazing who can actually just, at the click of my fingers, you can actually turn anything. Oh, just turn it round and make it magical. So. You, you see my vision and you bring it to life and I think you guys are the most amazing. Yeah, so, so, so Stuart, um, mm -hmm. I've sort of I've mentioned, you've, you've been King Arthur and, <laughs> yes. um, and you're, you're in this, you're in, you're in this, this, role, this role as well. Um, how did you get, get into the mindset of your character? Uh, well, that, that, yeah, that's, that was a hard one. I mean, sometimes they... Um, it leaps off you from the page. You look at the script, and sometimes it's just there. The mannerisms, the voice, it's there. It didn't happen with this guy, and I couldn't. I couldn't. What, what is this, you? At least some of my script is bad. And <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm saying, I'm saying, on this occasion, I couldn't find his voice. I couldn't find it. Um, and uh, you know, and I, and I, I turned up. Uh, you know, I was came on set. Um, I didn't have any scenes on the day I came. But I met the other doctor and um, James, who I think you've you've already um, interviewed him, and uh, and and he had that sort of Victorian doctor down perfectly. And I thought, yeah, that's it. That's that's how you do a Victorian doctor. And I just thought, I can't I can't do that as well um, because we won't have a dynamic between us. You know, we'll we'll just be identicals of each other. You know, and it it just won't work. Um, so I had to try and find you know something else about him. And because these are these are real characters, these 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 people lived, you know, um, you know, 120 years ago, and um, and so you want to do something truthful to their to their characters and who they were, um, wherever possible. Um, and so I I researched, I looked up this this doctor, and and there's so little about a lot of these characters because um, the story of of Lucy went away quite quickly after these tragic terrible events and and the. The court scene that broke broke the community apart. Um, I think they, the community wanted to put it behind them, so so that's why that that sort of happened. But but a lot of these characters sort of disappeared with history. Um, um, but I did find one um, one paper that um, Dr. Hogg had written, and it was published seven years after the the um, the killing of, of of Lucy, and it was. Um, a medical paper he published on the causal link between poverty and health and using you know the working classes of, of um, Workington his own patients as as the sort of um, subjects of the study and so that gave me an idea that this this guy is quite you know he's got some empathy he's got compassion he's he's community minded and um, quite progressive for you know for a Victorian doctor you know there's no, there's no NHS there's no there's no you know um, Healthcare of that sense, so he's he's actually quite a, ahead of his of his time, and um, 
so I, I took that and, and, and used that sort of aspect of him and, and made him a sort of a sympathetic character. And that worked well with, with um, Dr. Hyatt, who is that traditional, you know, stern, snobbish sort of um, Victorian doctor that you expect. And, and I think that they work well together, that dynamic between them um, works. And, uh, and so I developed that sort of character. And, and he does have, um, Steve wrote into the script, he has these sort of nervous disorders, and um, and so I had to I had to really work hard to try and and figure that one out because he I, I don't know anything about anxiety or panic attacks and and he suffers from these so again I had to really research that in order to to bring that out in the in the character and in some of the scenes as well. John definitely the work of a deranged mind. Yeah, so um, I, I think what I've learned is that um, normally with, with, with films and TV that I've, I've been involved with, I, I'm normally there as a daily. And so I just, you know, I go in and that's it. I have, you know, the one day. Um, but this has been a role that has been, uh, you know, allowed me to, to, you know, take on a part that's, that's developed for, you know, well, as, as Townsend has said, two years we've been at this. And um, so I, I think I've learned to, you know, to work with other people, to work with a great crew and cast. Um, so, so I think um, that has been um, different for me, as, as opposed to just coming in to, a, to just do a, a walk on part doing a full role and, and a really a, a, a long stint at it. Um, that has taught me quite a lot. And, uh, and Steve, what have you learned in the process of working with this really fantastic cast? What have I learned? Um, I've learned a hell of a lot actually because this started off as just a proof of concept to a micro short kind of you know, trailer when we first started off. And with this particular set of people, I learned very quickly how much talent they actually had and how much dedication they had to the actual film itself. And especially with Stuart, who one day when we were traveling up to Bristol, I believe it was, last year, in January last year, and he blew me away it's because he told me that he'd actually been studying and researching the doctor who, who he was playing part of. And he knew things that I didn't know. And I thought, my God, this is amazing. And it was through that. But they all became main, everybody became main cast and lead main cast throughout all this. So everybody who's in this meeting this evening really do play one hell of an integral part of the actual film itself, or the series. And I've learned through that that you can never, you can never underestimate anybody because everybody has some amazing talent out there. And say these guys were not so semi unknown is an absolute crime in this industry because they actually do perform so damn well. They do deserve to go a hell of a long way. So yeah, that's what I've learned from this one, is that no matter who comes on set, you can't look at them and think, well, what do you know? You've got to look at them and think, show what you can do because I believe in them. Superb. Right, well, why should people see this series, this, this film? Well, why, should they, why should they see it? Well, this, this film, it's... it's um, it's a true, it's an original um, story. And I think that, you know, th this day and age, we, we have a lot of on, what we see on TV and film is, is a lot of remakes and um, retelling of, of things in history. And, and when we have a new contemporary story, it is contemporary, it's modern, it's happened in the last couple of years. Everyone knows about it already. This is a story that is true. And no one knows about it, you know, and it's a tragic and it, it's horrific. And and um, as Alex said, yes, it, it should have been told. And um, and this is the first time it's happening because it wasn't. It, it appeared in the newspapers in 1882, and and that was it, really, you know. And um, you know, and that's that's terrible that that happened. So if if the audience is going to watch this, they're, they're going to watch something. Um, for the first time, they're going to be among the first people to see the whole story and know the whole story. And that, that's pretty special.